ಆದ್ವಿತೀಯ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಬೇಕಕ್ಕೆ ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕಾವೇ ವೇಗವತ್ಮಸ ಪುಲೋಲ್ತಮ ಹೋಮ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ಬ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಂಬಂಧ ತಾವೇವನ ಎಸ್ ಎಲ್ ಟಿ ಮೊಬಿಟೆಲ್ ದೇಶ ಫೈವ್ ಬಲವೇಗೆ ಒಬ್ಬತ್ ಅದು ಆತ್ವಿದಿನ್ನ Tonight on First and Nine, this Wednesday the 10th of May 2023. Official Request Sri Lanka made its first official debt treatment request to all Paris Club member countries. Protection Assured Governor of the Central Bank Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe shows protection of the banking system during domestic debt restructuring. Intensifying Weather Men department warns that severe depression in the Bay of Bengal will develop into a severe depression and into a severe cyclonic storm. On the rise, health experts urge people to seek medical advice if fever persists beyond 2 days. Says 2600 cases of dengue reported within first 10 days of May. Alliance Finance metru run nai seva ve run pound kata rupayam 1 lakh 70 000 ka ihala adhikarama. Obe vishwase denu sensurain then lagamati pharmacy in labata hacker. A very good evening and welcome to other than a 24 English news. In your top story for tonight, Minister Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekar responded to the remarks made by opposition leader Sajid Premadasa regarding a seeking a higher compensation with regard to the Express Pearl disaster by saying that they had to provide proof of the damage caused from the disaster in relevance to the compensation that they expect to demand from the owners of the vessel. He highlighted that Sri Lankan authorities cannot further impose restrictions on the contents of the containers that are allowed to be brought into the territorial waters of the country if Sri Lanka plans to become a central hub of the global shipping routes. Meveni Sankirna Marine disaster ekak pilibandawa neethi upades labadima sandaha Lankawe neethi kewaru ne ay katha dekak ne eka neethi pati tumama piliyar ekena neethi pati tumama kiwa apita meka hakiyawa ne apita awashya international eka ehema nan idi mono karanna da eka thamai satta tatte mokoda eweni nadu me ne ne purudu wenna nadu karanna dennat ba ne ehema karala billion ha araga claim ekak vinash unu kawuda wagiyima bara ganna e inda thamai api internationally wedagath neethi kewaru aragatte me kaanduwak sidu wenawai kiyala jaatyantara warayan dekakin pratikshepa उंटाइन ఆ మీటర్ 500 లంగ దెండ దహై కియలా నీతి రీతి పనవన్ మం కియన మీటర్ వెడి వెడి బంది అక అపే రటట అపి లబా గన్నట అపి సటన్ కరన్నట ఓనే జనతావ చూన్ కరన్న గన్న పులం బిలియన 10ක් గన్న పులం బిలియన 100ක් గన్న పులం బిలియన 6ක් విదర అన్న మే ఈట వెడి గానక అపి గన్న తమై అపి అన్న ఓనే కియలా అపి గన్న గాన అపి తహౌరు కల పెన్నన్న ఓనే అపే వాహనయక్ అపి హెప్పునత్ పారి గిహిల్లా అపి ఇల్లన గాన హంబెన్నే నే మే రక్షణ సమాగమే అపి ఒప్పు కల పెన్నన్న ఓనే వెరద్ద కొహుంద ఉనే ఏ వెరద్దెం వెచ్చ అలాబే మొకద్ద ఏక పెన్నల ఓనే ఏ రక్షణ समागम इंगंड ये बाकी में मितने वैरादी माते आके नो न मैं क्या कहे नो गिना लतिये ने विशेष सहित द्रावुवे गिना लतिये ने समाहर द्रावुवे गेन ने सुधु सुने ना अभी का मार्गे गमन केंद्र स्थान एक बार टापी पत्ते न हाथरो ना न वो लग गेन बाडू पिलीबंद हुए तहानंदा न पुरान मोना नया देन ने तकड़ समाहर गेनो मेरे बाटे अन्न दूंने ने साम पल्ले को तो कराने अन्न दूंने नहीं किला मम्मा दानुत कता करा ना रा इतने हिटबु अध्यक्ष के जनरल वर्य आगे मतलब मटक मटक के अति बुन्ने हिम अन्न दूंने नहीं किए निकल अभी ना रा के इल्लुआ में किला साम पल्ले का नोने किला ना भी कहाँ मुदा बताऊँ ये पहाड़ कौन से पे हुए ये नाउका वासल टम की हिला अवश्य साम पल्ले टिक गन ये साम पल्ले टिक एकतु करा इनिसा किसी में दानुमा कत नतु केनो में नव समागम मलिंग दाल तीनों लो में अपे रटाय तुले तहानंग कलाप मैं समाहर वाला ना ये नवा गिनिच चकिया नवा तुले तमाई सीट आनुवक तीमुने कंटेनर टिक एलिया विशेष लती मुने सीट दहाया किधर इधर एलिया टा आपे टिक तमाई अपे वैरलती रे टा इधर कड़े इतनो सीट आनुवक एलिया टा आवन अपे वैरलती रे मीट वैडी आपे वित्र बेनो अली सब रे करो हम तुम्हाँ के हुआ मेक बहुत भी आकुल संकीर्ण बेहत अधेसिद्धि उनानं हिरण अडू दान बे एक आपे पिन जान मा 
හැබැයි කාලාවරෝධී නීතිය අනුව අපිට තියෙන්නේ සම්පූර්ණ කාලයේ අපිට තියෙන්නේ මාස 24යි මාස 24න් මාස 23ක් ගත වෙනතුරු කිසිම දෙයක් කළේ නැහැ අන්තිමට නඩු පවරන්නට තිබුණේ දවස් 22යි අපි කිසිසේත් සෑහෙමිට පත්වන්නේ නැහැ නීතිපතුමාගේ ඒ ක්‍රියාමාර්ගය සම්බන්ධයෙන් ඉතින් ඒතර මෙතන ඉස්මතු වෙන ප්‍රශ්නේ තමයි මේක නොසැලකිල්ල පමනක්ද නැත්තම් ඊට වඩා වෙන සැඟවුණු සාධකයක් මේ තුල තියෙනවාද කියන ප්‍රශ්නේ අපිට නගන්න සිදු වෙනවා Now Sri Lankan authorities formally presented their request for debt treatment yesterday during the first meeting with its bilateral creditors of the Paris Club. Yesterday's meeting was co-chaired by India, Japan and France including the Paris Club creditors as well as other official bilateral creditors. In a statement issued following the meeting, the Paris Club stated that the creditor committee will pursue its work to find an appropriate solution to Sri Lanka's external debt vulnerabilities consistent with the parameters of the IMF program. Issuing a statement, the Paris Club yesterday announced that 17 countries have formally formed an officially creditor committee to discuss the Sri Lankan authorities' request for a debt treatment. The first meeting of the committee was held yesterday virtually and was co-chaired by India, Japan and France, including Paris Club creditors as well as other official bilateral creditors. According to the statement, the Paris Club members with no eligible claims as well as China, Saudi Arabia and Iran attended the meeting as observers. Sri Lankan authorities had formally presented the request for debt treatment during the meeting and has reiterated the commitment to transparency and comparability of treatment towards the official bilateral creditors. The statement read that the IMF and World Bank representatives presented the latest macroeconomic developments regarding Sri Lanka and the current status of their relationship with the country. It was also mentioned that the creditor committee welcomed the passage of the resolution for implementation of the IMF supported program. by the Sri Lankan parliament on the 20th of April this year further it was stated that the committee will now pursue its work to find an appropriate solution to Sri Lanka's external debt vulnerabilities consistent with the parameters of the IMF program meanwhile private creditors and other official bilateral creditors were urged to provide debt treatment on terms that are at least as favorable as the ones agreed by the creditor committee in line with the comparability of the treatment principle The committee also reiterated its invitation to other bilateral official creditors to formally join the creditor committee. No team of the International Monetary Fund will be visiting Sri Lanka tomorrow. Prior to the first review mission later this year, this visit is part of the ongoing discussions between the island nation and the international lender. A staff team from the International Monetary Fund is scheduled to arrive tomorrow and wait in the country until the 23rd of May. Now the director of the Asia Pacific Department of the IMF Krishna Sirinivasan of that institution is also scheduled to join on the 12th of May and 15th. In the meantime Peter Brewer the head of Sri Lankan mission to the department and Sarvana Jananda of the resident representative of Sri Lanka will also join the visit. Sri Lanka received 330 million US dollars as the first tranche of the 2.9 billion US dollar extended fund facility credit line approved by the International Monetary Fund last year. This delegation will be coming for a consultation meeting before its first review. The governor of the central bank Dr Nandalal Virasinghe assured the protection of the deposits of the general public and the overall banking system despite the steps taken by the government to restructure the domestic debt element of the country speaking during a public lecture he added that he expects the inflation of the country to come down by the fourth quarter of this year and expect to have market interest rates normalized as well by this time Sri Lanka's central bank chief has assured that the stability of the country's banking system will be safeguarded and the protection of the public deposits regardless of any kind of domestic debt optimization to be conducted. Speaking during a public lecture on state of the economy, challenges and outlook as reflected in the Central Bank Annual Report 2022, CBSL Governor Dr Nandalal Virasinghe emphasized that the central bank have assured the financial system stability as we have always been maintaining. He noted that there is a lot of speculation and stories going around especially regarding the stability of the public deposits and banking system stability while adding that one of the key objectives of the central bank is to maintain banking system stability he said that they will ensure any kind of domestic debt optimization and that they will ensure safeguard of the banking system stability as well as the protection of the public deposits 
He added that the Sri Lankan Banking Association confirmed the basis of assurances that they have given. Responding to a question regarding the high interest rates and how soon the central bank would be able to fix this issue, Dr. Veera Singer said they are hoping the interest rates would be normalized in the second half of the year, in line with the inflation expectations prediction which is a single digit towards the end of the fourth quarter. Dr. Veera Singh has said that he thinks that inflation is most important right now, which is coming down faster than expected, and added that they also see interest rates from the peak easing down. He added that after the market, interest rates will come down faster, so that they are hoping in the second half, interest rates will be normalized in line with the inflation expectations prediction, which is a single digit towards the end of the fourth quarter this year. Now, Sri Lankan authorities have reiterated the country's commitment towards transparency and the compatibility of the treatment with all of its creditors during the first meeting of the official bilateral creditors meeting. Due to taking to Twitter today, State Minister of Finance Shayan Sem Singh has stated that the officials present at the meeting had also underlined the need to address the country's debt situation as soon as possible. He states that Sri Lankan authorities yesterday attended the meeting of the official creditor committee for Sri Lanka and formally presented the country's request for a debt treatment. Further, in this regard, he also stated that they reiterated their commitment to transparency and compatibility of treatment with all creditors and underlined the need to address the country's debt situation as soon as possible. Now, 14 individuals arrested for assaulting to death a 27-year-old and seriously injuring another at an air conditioning repair centre in the Dehivala area have been ordered to be remanded until the 23rd of May. They were prosecuted, produced rather, before the Mount Lavania Magistrates Court. However, the police stated that two more suspects are yet to be arrested in connection with the incident. According to police, investigations have revealed that one of the victims was seen by the staff of an air conditioning repair centre in the Hivala area to have suspiciously left a baggage near the premises. The suspects had beaten the victims under the assumption that he had robbed goods from their business property on a previous day. The suspects had then forced him to make a phone call to the other victim who had accompanied him and upon his arrival had beaten and detained him as well. Police stated that both victims were detained inside the business property for at least eight hours. Subsequently, the suspects had handed over the victims to the Dehivala police station, claiming that they had trespassed into the repair centre, due to which they had been beaten and detained. Afterwards, police took steps to hospitalise the victims who were in critical condition. Upon admission, one of the victims succumbed to injuries he had sustained. The deceased was identified as Dilshan Rangakumara, a 27-year-old resident of Badovita in Mount Lavania. The other victim admitted to the Kalubovila Teaching Hospital is a 28-year-old resident of the Dehivala area. Police, however, stated that the 28-year-old has run away from the hospital while receiving treatments. At the same time, police stated that investigations revealed that the scene of the crime was subsequently cleared and cleaned by the suspects. Further, steps were taken to arrest 14 suspects who are employees of the repair centre. They were revealed to be residents of Kinnia, Nilaveli, Avisavella, Kaluthara, Bandaragama, Gol, Beruvela, Kantale, Hatton and Ruanvella areas. Meanwhile, the Mount Lavenia Magistrate Court today ordered all 14 suspects to be remanded until the 23rd of this month after being produced before the court. Police say that two more suspects are to be arrested in connection with the incident. No meeting pertaining to the development of Sri Lanka's renewable energy sector took place today between the Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchana Vijay Sekara, and members of the Renewable Energy Associations. Accordingly, the group was educated on the new tariff feeding formula, while discussions pertaining to the concerns of those stakeholders within the industry also took place. Now, members representing all the renewable energy associations and officials from the Ceylon Electricity Board, the Lanka Electricity Company, Sri Lanka Sustainable Energy Authority and members of the Feeding Tariff Formula Committee were present at the meeting. And we'll be back with more news right after this short commercial break. Stay with us. Kode mata perali kerana balap bulu angkara Mahindra Juvo Timo Vitin. Badam godai, kode mata mai Swaraj Tractor Timo Vitin. Atwa ha? Atwa gana, obat udah masalah matwa na.
Welcome back. Now, the Department of Meteorology said today that the deep depression that is currently in the Bay of Bengal is expected to intensify in the coming days and develop into a cyclonic storm. The department also said that the forecast for heavy, fairly showers of 75 millimeters to be expected in several parts of the island. Meanwhile, the National Building Research Organization has extended its early landslide warning to tomorrow morning in light of the most recent weather patterns. The Natural Hazards Early Warning Center today issued a red alert stating that the depression over the southwest bay of Bengal has intensified into a deep depression and will intensify gradually into a cyclonic storm this evening. It was further mentioned that the cyclone will gradually intensify further into a severe cyclonic storm by tomorrow morning and a very severe cyclonic storm by tomorrow midnight over the southeast and adjoining central bay of Bengal. The department stated that the system is likely to move north northeastwards towards Bangladesh to Myanmar coasts on the 14th of May. Speaking to other than English news, Dr. Shiromani Jawardhan of the Department of Meteorology meanwhile stated that there will be no direct impact from the cyclone to the country. However, she stated that a southwesterly flow will be temporarily established in Sri Lanka, bringing showers over the southwestern parts of the country. Accordingly, showery conditions are to be expected till the 14th of May. Meanwhile, issuing its general weather forecast for tomorrow, the Department of Meteorology stated that showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the western, Sabaragamua, central, northwestern and southern provinces. Further, fairly heavy showers about 75 mm are likely at some places in the western, Sabaragamua and northwestern provinces and in the Kandy, Nur Elia, Gol and Mathura districts. The Med Department further mentioned that strong winds about 40 to 45 km per hour can be expected at times over the western and southern coastal areas and along the western slopes of the central hills. Meanwhile, taking the latest weather patterns into account, the Department of National Building Research Organization extended its early landslide warnings for several areas in four districts. In consideration with the country Israel, issued landslide early warning has been extended up to 9.30 a.m. tomorrow with that. Warning level 1, watch yellow warning was issued to Nagoda, Yakalamulla, Badegama and LPTA Division Second Division Gold District, Ududumbara Division Second Division Candy District, K Gol, Namukkana, Yatiantota, Darnegala, Galigamu and Mavanala Division Second Division K Gol District, Ridigama Division Second Division Kurangal District. Now, the director of the National Dengue Control Unit, Dr. Nalinari Ratna, said today that over 35,000 dengue patients have been reported in the country so far. He added that 2,500 dengue patients have been reported over the past 10 days in the month of May alone and added that he expects the number to exceed the figure reported in the same month last year. The number of dengue cases reported in the island have increased as a result of the prevailing climatic conditions of the country. Due to this, the number of dengue cases reported since the start of this year is 35,000. According to the Ministry of Health, a majority of cases reported since the start of this year have been recorded from the Gampa and Colombo districts, while the Trincomalee and Batiklo districts have been identified as high-risk areas for dengue as well. The National Dengue Prevention Unit placed the number of cases reported from the four districts so far to a total of 32,600. Speaking at a media briefing today, the director of the National Dengue Control Unit, Dr. Nalin Ari Ratna, stated that the Western province accounts for 50% of the total number of patients reported so far. He went on to say that a total of 2,600 patients only have been reported so far in the month of May and that they expect the number to increase by the end of the month. The director of the NDCU highlighted that compared to last year, a 60% increase in the number of cases reported since the start of this year has been observed. In May 2022, 6,600 patients had been reported across the island. With the prevailing weather condition expected to continue, the director stated that a further increase in the number of dengue patients can be expected. He further listed schools, public and private institutions, religious places, construction sites and idle lands as breeding grounds, stating that necessary steps should be taken regarding the situation. He further stated that 22% of the dengue patients reported are within the ages of 5 and 18, while 60% of the patients reported are between the ages of 20 to 60. He further urged the general public to seek medical advice from a qualified doctor if a person has fever for more than two days and added that a number of blood tests will need to be done in order to identify the virus. The director of the NDCU insisted that a patient with a reduced platelets count or symptoms of dengue would be essential to be hospitalized 
and provide further medication. Given the recent rise in the new dengue variant DEN3, he added that researches are being carried out in order to verify the spread of the variant across the island and to identify any new variants in the island. Now, two cruise ships with over 900 passengers visited the Hambantota International Port yesterday. The CWO of the HIPG mentioned that this would mean more vessels calling at the Hambantota International Port this year as it falls within the circus of the cruise vessels. Hambantota International Port was visited by more than 900 tourists in two cruise ships, namely the MS Europa 2 and the MS Azamara Quest. This is a good sign for Sri Lanka's recovering tourism industry as more tourists are expected to visit the country through cruise as part of this. Amongst the sites that the tourists are expected to visit are the Yala National Park, the Udavalave National Park, the Bundala National Park, Kataragama Devale and the Mulkirigala Temple. The visitors also had the opportunity to take a tour of the city of Hambantota and visited many of the hotels in Hambantota. CEO of Hamantota International Port Group Tissa Vikram Singh has said that they are happy to welcome these two cruise ships back. The Azamara Quest visited us in December last year and Europa too called at the port in 2019. He stated that they are pleased to note that they are entering the cruise ship circuit, implying that they expect more vessels to call at the Hamantota International Port this year. Now the Colombo Bourse ended lower today, weighed down by industrial stocks. The CSC All Share Price Index settled 0.29% lower at 8,892.37 points. Meanwhile, the S&P SL20 ended the day 0.61% lower at 2,588.63 points. Expo Lanka Holdings and Brown's Investments were the top losers on the CSC All Share, falling 1.6% and 3.6% respectively. Trading volume on the index fell to 17.9 million shares from 28 million in the previous session. Now the equity market's turnover fell to 415.3 million rupees from 667.8 million rupees in the previous session. The energy sector was a top contributor to the market turnover whilst the sector index lost 1.13%. Foreign investors were net buyers purchasing stocks worth 18.2 million rupees while domestic investors were net sellers offloading shares worth 413.7 million rupees. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against the other major currencies during the day. Now, oil prices fell today, ending a three-day rally as an unexpected rise in U.S. oil inventories sparked demand concerns as investors awaited inflation data for a steer on the U.S. interest rates. Brent crude dropped one U.S. dollar to $76.43 a barrel by 8.55 Greenwich Mean Time, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude fell 99 cents to $72.72. .72. The American Petroleum Institute was reported as saying by market sources yesterday that in a possible sign of weakening demand, U.S. crude inventories rose by about 3.6 million barrels in the week ended 5th of May, while gasoline stockpiles rose by 399,000 barrels. Meanwhile, U.S. government data on oil inventories is due today. The surprise in U.S. inventory build, along with lower crude imports and April's softer export growth in China, exacerbated worries about global oil demand. The market is awaiting U.S. Consumer Price Index figures for April today. New York Fed President John Williams said inflation remains too high and the central bank will raise rates again if necessary, even though the Federal Reserve dropped guidance about the need for future hikes. The market is also awaiting the monthly oil report from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries tomorrow for clues on whether the group and its allies will need to cut output again to prop up prices. OPEC and its allies, together known as OPEC Plus, agreed last month to cut production by 1.16 million barrels per day from May through to the end of the year. 
And that's all the news we have for you this evening. Join us again tomorrow for the very latest news at the very same time. Tune into our social media pages until then to get the very latest updates. Have a pleasant evening and good night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.